what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so i just want to talk about this idea that i've been seeing floating around and just some people have brought it up to me i wanted to share my thoughts on it the idea of martha meeks getting justice for randy in screen five like being one of the ghost face killers and she has her children involved uh, as her foot soldiers essentially because i don't think martha would be the one walking around in the costume she would be the one barking orders to her children randy's niece and nephew chad and mindy meeks martin um i don't think i would prefer to see that and the reason i say that is because i don't prefer to i don't want to see that so late in the franchise and i'll elaborate some more what i mean is something like that i feel would have been fitting for scream 3's narrative with Roman Bridger and considering the fact that it's also something that's bothersome to me when I watch Scream 3 considering that the movie is still shot as if there are multiple killers with some of the antics that we see Roman is able to pull off by himself and the reason for that is because of the fact that they backed out of doing this two the two killer dynamic at the last moment during filming I believe but they still decided to shoot it it was happening during filming so that's why the movie it's shot as if they're going to go the two killer route because they were going to do that until they changed their mind last minute i guess during filming correct me if i'm wrong in the comment section below but the whole martha meeks thing we know we saw heather Monterazzo on set one time anyway briefly because melissa barrera unintentionally put her on her instagram story she couldn't take it down quick enough for a lot of you to screenshot it and post it all over twitter <laughs> so we know that heather Monterazzo is going to be factored in it some in some way at least we hope her role could have been cut from the final cut who knows but we at least know that there's children that are related to them to the meeks uh randy and martha who we met in scream 3 i just don't think that that narrative would be fitting this late in the game because you would have to really sell me on a narrative to make this worth being acceptable i guess is what i'm trying to say so many years have passed since randy's death you would have to come up with a very tragic backstory for what martha has been through since his death and why she felt that she needed to do this now and not sooner and again i feel like that's something that would have been much more appropriate to have with roman martha being roman's partner we know roman's motive roman wanted to take revenge on his sister who had the life that roman felt he should have had and also had the fame that we know roman wanted to have because he was a struggling film director he had a lot of music video awards but he never really got the status that he wanted in his role as being a film director he just wanted to make a classic love story we know that he was completely ignorant to the events that transpired after marine's death because he went on to just continue his directing career and he didn't learn anything about what happened with sydney and all this other stuff that happened until after when the staff franchise landed in his lap and he was offered the role to direct the third film and of course he obviously did some research he learned about sydney's past that enraged him and then he of course conspired and planned out the events of what was originally the final film in the series screen three so at that point in time doing that during that research he could have reached out to martha meeks during that martha meeks could have been convinced to col collaborate with roman they could have gone on done another killing spree randy's gets his vengeance in martha's eyes because somehow roman convinces her that this was sydney's fault just like how roman thinks what's wrong with his life is sydney's fault and then that could have been more fitting there with the whole revenge angle that roman wanted to have and the only reason i'm saying that is because that movie is happening right after the film where randy died this is coming so many years later i feel like this is this is this is not the appropriate time to do a narrative like this this is almost as if let's say mrs loomis waited till scream five to do this i feel like we would have had not to say all of you i would have at least let's say mrs loomis is revealed as the killer in this one and she never was revealed as a killer in scream two you have to now sell me on why you waited this long to do this you don't have to do that when it's right after your son or your brother's death but i feel like when you wait this long that's now putting you in a much difficult position as a writer to now sell your audience on why so many years later this person finally snapped 
and decided, you know what? I'm going to get revenge for my brother. I'm going to get revenge for my son because of that girl who, you know, it's her fault. It's it's her fault. Like you didn't think this when it happened. So now you have to com come up with a story of what has what has happened that now has convinced you in your mind that this is Sydney's fault. Whereas if Martha does this in Scream 3, you don't have to do that because it's happening right after Randy died, which is in Scream 2. Same thing with Mrs. Loomis. Mrs. Loomis is the killer in Scream 2. She wants to avenge Billy's death. Billy died in the original film. Now, and I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that Mrs. Loomis couldn't have been the killer in Scream 3. That would have been fine, too, if they had waited and done Mrs. Loomis for Scream 3. I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have needed as much of a convincing angle there but we're talking about now decades or so later martha wants revenge for randy's death now what has happened to you that you now want to do this now that's the part that i feel like is going to make this a little bit more difficult to make it convincing to the audience not only that i just feel like the narrative at this point would be a lot it would be bothersome to a lot of people because I know a lot of you don't even like the character of Randy Meeks. I personally like the aspect of him in terms of what he represents for the horror fan and the horror nerd. But other than that, I can understand why there's certain qualities about the characters that other, about this character that you guys don't like. And I don't personally care for the other qualities myself either. I just am a Randy fan in terms of what he represented as the horror nerd in the film and the person who was knowledgeable of the ins and outs of how to survive a horror film and of course he's going over the things that we have seen in previous films before watching scream which makes that scene that much more brilliant if you're someone who watches it for the very first time and you've seen countless horror movies that do the rules that he's saying you should follow to survive them or that break the rules that he says you need to follow to survive any horror film Martha Meeks getting revenge for Randy in Scream 5. I'm not here for it. If you're here for it, you have to sell me on that. What what would be the reasoning for why she waited this long? That's the only thing that I cannot think of in my head. So if you guys want to chime in in the comment section below, go right ahead. But if you haven't, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification and miss a video. In the description, I will have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, if there's any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.